Hi everyone and welcome to this quick video tutorial on access control lists. So as you can see here I've got a couple of activities for us to kind of walk through with regards to access control lists. So essentially what I want to do is um, in this particular in this first activity I want to add a packet filter at router 1 on the fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 inbound interface. So what I'm going to be doing guys is I'm going to be adding a packet filter to essentially block traffic. Okay, usually we've always been talking about allowing traffic and getting our networks to work. Now what we're going to do is we're going to zone in or look at how do we stop traffic flowing across the network. So in this case I want to stop PC0 from communicating with any PCs outside of its subnetwork. Okay, so outside of its subnet or outside of its network. So essentially um, I want to, here's PC0, I want to stop the traffic for that guy maybe accessing any PCs or any serial interfaces here, the web server and so forth and PC3 over here so I don't want to allow that. However, I'm saying all other traffic should be permitted so I don't want to block PC1 for example, I still want PC1's traffic to go out. So how do we go about doing this? Well, this is actually um, pretty straightforward using access control lists. So let's, let's walk through the process. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to basically log into, well, even before I log into the router, let's just do a couple of small checks to see, can I indeed ping some devices at this moment in time? So I'm gonna open up PC0 here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just basically do a couple of ping tests. So I'm going to type ping, I'm going to say 192.168, I'm going to say 20.254, just to make sure that we can indeed ping from basically PC0 up to this web FTP server. And that looks good. Also, what I should be able to do is I should be able to do a little trace route. So trace or T. Um, so just make sure I've got that spelling right there. Um, trace or T. And I should be able to go 192. 168.20.254. Let's just see if that works. So there I can see that I'm getting, uh, it's showing me the path the packets are taking to get to that particular server. So in this particular case, I can see the first hop it hits is the interface here. This is the default gateways um, IP address of for example, uh, PC0. I can see 192.168.10.1. That's fast Ethernet zero zeros. IP address there. Then I can see that the second hop is 10.1.1.2. Who would that be? That would be basically the interface here, and we can't really see it too well, but it's serial 000's interface on router 2 here. And then finally, our third hop is basically hitting our web server or our FTP server here, doing both jobs. So what I want to do is I want to be able to stop this guy communicating, potentially this server and for, for everyone else for that matter. The only one that really it would be able to communicate with is PC1 in this particular network, because again, it's in its subnet. So how can I do that? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close down that window for a moment. I'm gonna open up our friend Reader1 here. And in this example, it's asking us guys to essentially to, to walk through the example here and to stop, um, the, to put a packet filter on fast Ethernet 00's inbound interface. Because what we'll be able to see is, we'll be able to see that um, using X control lists, we can either apply them inbound. So again, this is traffic coming in from, for example, PC0 coming into the router. Or for example, if traffic was going the other way, we could actually apply access control lists going outbound. So maybe if, for example, PC3 um, over here was sending traffic in, we could apply an access list uh, an access control list going outbound. But in this case, it's asking us for inbound traffic. So again, anything coming in from either PC0 or PC1, we're gonna apply an access control list. So how do we go about doing this? Well, what we're gonna do first of all, guys, is it's always good practice I always say is, before you do anything, do some testing, so we've just done that. Also, for example, you might say, okay, let's do a little bit of testing from PC1. Make sure that it can ping a few networks. So again, can PC1, for example, ping that server? So I'm gonna say 192, I'm say 20.254, and this looks fine. It looks like it's getting the pings back. So I can see that looks good from PC0 and PC1's uh, perspective, but what if, if I go in now, for example, and if I want to check is there any other access control lists on this router? 
Well, what I could do is I could, I could use the command show access lists and that will basically show me. Now, if there was any access lists, it would show me um, the access list and the rules in that list. As I can see here, there's nothing showing. Also, for example, what I could also do is I could show show IP interface fast Ethernet zero slash zero. And what this will do is it will show me any sort of inbound or outbound rules applied to this, for example, router. Now, I'm not expecting to see anything here, but I'll just show you where we can see this. So here you can see, guys, it's showing here. Look at these lines. Outgoing, outgoing access list is not set and inbound access list is not set. Now, when we set this in a few moments, I'll show you how this will change. But let's now apply this access list. So what do I want to do? I want to essentially deny this host here, 192.168.10.11, but I want to permit anyone else on this network. So how I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna write up, I'm gonna create an access control list. So this will be used to filter my traffic. So I'm gonna go into configuration mode, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say access control, uh, access list, and then what I can do is I can basically give, I can press question mark here and it'll say, do you wanna create an IP standard access list or do you wanna create an IP extended access list? Now for the moment, we're gonna get started with the standard access control list. And what they basically are is it allows us to filter based on source IP address only. Okay, so that's a key thing to remember. So standard access list, IP source address only. And that meets our requirements because what we want to do in this case is we want to just block or filter the traffic just from this PC0 here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to put in a basically a number here. I can choose anything from 1 to 99. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose number 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit question mark again. It's going to say, okay, what do you want to do here? Do you want to, to deny, permit, or make a, a remark, a comment, for example? So what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say I want to deny traffic. So I'm going to say deny. And then what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to say, okay. And it's going to say, well, what address do you want to do it from? Do you want to do it from uh, basically a specific address? Do you want a single host address? Any address, what is it you want to do? Now, in my case, what I want to do is I want to basically just deny one host, this host. And I want to say, in, in this case, I want to say the host address, now that I've pressed host, I'm going to say the host address is 192.168.10. And I'll make sure that I need to correct those. So again, what was my question? It was basically, I wish to stop PC0. So again, dot 11. Okay. Once I do that, I'm going to press enter. So now what I've done is I've added basically one item to this access control list. Now, we're not actually finished here right now because if I went do show um, access list, what I will see is we see basically one entry here, guys, in the standard access list one, okay? However, at the bottom of each access list, there is an implicit deny. So if I do not add anything else, what I'm essentially doing is I'm gonna block not just 192.168.10.11, I'm actually gonna block all other traffic as well coming into this inbound interface. And that's not something I want to do because if I if I started to send traffic from PC1 out now to basically this server, and um, when I apply it to the interface, okay, it simply won't work. Okay, so I need what I'm what I need to do is I need to add one more rule. So what this rule is, it's basically gonna say I want to deny this host only, but I want to permit any other PCs on this particular network or this particular traffic going through in inbound on this interface. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say access list and I'm gonna say one again, and I'm gonna say permit any. And this is what it's gonna do is, this is gonna add another entry onto the bottom of this standard access list saying, again, I wanna allow other IP addresses coming in through this interface to go through without any problems. So if I have a look at that now, if I do show access list one, if I basically have a look now, I can see that I've got a deny host. So again, I'm gonna deny this guy here, but I'm gonna permit any other IP address, okay? Now, at this moment in time, nothing is applied. And sometimes people say, I've, I've applied my, I've, I've done my access list, but now still what's happening is this guy can still ping the server. And that would be true. 
you, we would think, some people would say, well, actually, should it be able to go through now? And the answer would be, for example, um, we would have a problem. So again, what we'd actually see is, if I try to ping this address here at the moment, it will actually work. And a lot of people will say, but why? I've just, I've just basically created an access control list. The reason it, it, this traffic will still be able to go through is because we haven't applied it on this interface. So if I do press this, it's gonna work. Okay, traffic is still going through. And also, if I went into PC1, it would work also. So again, if I went back here and just hit my up arrow and pre press it again, it's going through. So at this moment in time, even though I've set up the access list, I haven't finished it off. I haven't done the second step, which is basically to apply it to an interface. Now, in this case, I want to apply it on the inbound fast Ethernet 00 interface. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over interface. And I'm going to say fast Ethernet 0 slash 0. And what I'm now going to need to do is I'm going to need to apply this to this interface. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say IP access list. Well, actually, I, I, here's, a, here's actually uh, an important point here, guys. Um, although I was saying up here, access list one permit, I'm putting in my statements. Notice the syntax here. In order to apply it to an interface, I'll use the command IP access group. Okay, so again, whenever we're under an interface, we're going to be using access group. And I'm going to be saying the same number, number one. And then what I'm going to be doing then is, the key part of this, guys, is then where do you want to apply it? Do you want to apply it on the inbound interface, so traffic coming in from these computers? Or do you want to apply it for outbound traffic? That would be traffic coming from down here, coming out this interface. So what I'm going to say is, I want to apply it inbound. And that's really, really important because if we got that wrong, we'd be getting unexpected results. So what I'm now going to do, guys, now that I've applied that interface, what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to go back to my friend here. And what we want to do is we want to essentially block their traffic leaving this interface. So now if I hit my up arrow now and if I try to ping, this shouldn't work. I should get a message to say, sorry, this isn't going to get progressed or processed or allowed through from router one. So let's give this a go. So here we can see, guys, look at the difference. It's saying reply from 192.168.10.1, destination host unreachable. So what, what's happening here is this interface now has got this access control list and it's saying, stop, you're not allowed through. It's basically coming back with this unreachable message. So essentially, I've sent four packets none have been received back from, again, I haven't managed to get to this destination server here. If I go over and have a look at PC1 and try a command like this, I hit the up arrow, it should work. Let's give it a try. Again, we didn't want to stop. So what's happening now is it's going through this, it's, getting, it's, it's hitting this access control list, but what it's seeing is it's actually seeing that, and let's, let's show this guys, let's go back to um, our privilege mode, let's go show access control list one. What we can see guys is you can see that it's some of my traffic have just matched, for example, this deny statement, but some of my traffic has matched the permit only, the permit any. So again, which traffic match which? Well, I actually can see four of the matches, four of the pings match this deny host. If I went over here again and actually hit the up arrow, what we're gonna see, guys, is, and again, look at this, they're getting unreachable messages. If I go back in here, what we're gonna see is this rule that's getting hit, this should increase. So let's give that a try. So again, now we can see, look, eight packets now have reached this deny host. Again, if I was to go back in here and send another four messages, what's gonna happen with my rule set again here, guys? I should see 12 matches. Let's hit the up arrow. Let's press go again. So there you can see. Now again, notice the way my permit traffic is still staying at these four matches. Why? Because again, I haven't sent traffic that's been allowed through. If I went back into PC1 and sent traffic, well, What's gonna happen is now this traffic is gonna be allowed or permitted through. It's gonna match that permit any rule. And then what we should see is, we should see this um, matching increase. So this should now go up to eight matches. Let's hit the enter and there we can see guys. So what have we summed up? So what can we say guys? So what we've done in this activity one is, we've basically blocked PC0 allowing, so we basically blocked the traffic going outside of the network, 
okay? Um, we've allowed other traffic, i.e. PC1, to still be able to communicate out. Can PC0 still ping PC1? The answer to that question is yes, because they're still on the same subnet. So for example, if I went to the PC0 and said, let's, can I ping my friend PC192.168.10.10? The answer should be yes. So the access control list won't activate because again, remember, they're on the same network. So this should work. And there we can see we're getting four responses or four replies. So guys, I hope that's been beneficial to give you a brief overview of access control lists and in particular standard access control lists. Join me in a couple of minutes whereby we'll walk through another activity, activity two, where we'll add a packet filter at a different router on the inbound, in this case, router two. And what we'll see is we'll make use of what's called the wildcard uh, mask. Okay, so wildcard mask bits, and we'll talk about that. Okay, thanks for joining me today, guys, and speak to you soon.